So this here, Cecil, this is a solar ready. So you can buy a portable solar panel that folds up like a suitcase. And then all you got to do is just plug it into here and it'll feed back into your battery system. So like I said, if you are in a power outage situation, hey, hey, hey. If you are in a power outage situation or you just want to put some power back in your batteries, even though you're plugged in, you can get like I said, that foldable solar panel with this end on it, and it just plugs into there and feeds back into your battery system just to put some power back in there to keep them going. Mm -hmm. You got your awnings here, Cecil. There's one awning here, and then you got, you got another bigger awning on your slide. They're controlled from the switches inside the coach. So like I said, once we get inside, we'll, we'll We'll punch out all the slides and I'll show you where all the buttons are in there. Um, the good thing about the electric awning Cecil is it's very easy to operate. You push a button and it goes in and out. Another good feature of the awning is you can stop the awning wherever you want. It's not like an old school awning where it's either in or it's out and there's no in between. These ones are not like that. Now the downside of these awnings are, because you're up Northern Island, you get a lot of wind, you get a lot of rain. These things need to be put away in a windstorm or in heavy rain. Because they are not strong like the old school awnings are because they don't have that big support arm that the old school awnings do. They had to sacrifice something for the convenience and unfortunately that what is, is a little bit of the stability so like I said you got to be really 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 careful when you use these especially in coming into the winter months summer months you're going to be fine the winter months you really really got to make sure that you pay attention to the weather and pay attention to the awnings because to replace either one of these awnings you're looking at about four or five thousand dollars a piece so like I said they're great you you just got to stay on top of looking after them because they're not as strong as a regular awning on a trailer is. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it for the outside, Cecil. So we're going to go inside. So we're going to cut the video. We're going to go inside. And then I can do okay, the door. Okay, there we now. go. So this here is going to be your door lock, Cecil. Okay, this lock here, this one here, just locks the handle. This lock here locks the deadbolt. So you got two locks in here, okay? So like I said, if, if you're leaving for the day, just get in the habit of locking your deadbolt. That way if somebody else has a has you know trailer keys, they can't get in because there's no no keys. There's one key, one lock, but this one is a master key. So if it, somebody has a master key, they can get in if you don't lock your deadbolt, okay? So this will be your screen door, Cecil. So basically all you're going to do is just flick this down, open up the screen door, come over here, click it close, close this like that, and away you go, okay? And then when you're done, you're going to open it, you're going to come back, you're going to click it back under here, and then that all becomes one door again. This here is going to be your, your, uh, your deadbolt from the inside, so you just grab this red switch, and then you just pull it towards the handle, and then as you can see, that's your deadbolt there, so... In, lock, unlocked, locked, and then this is your handle to get out when you're when you're when you're in the inside. Next, is going to be putting the stairs down. So basically, what you do with this Cecil is you grab that yellow handle and you can go this way or you can go this way. It doesn't matter which way you go. And then you're going to grab it and then you're going to pull it towards you and then you're just going to grab it like this and then you're just going to put it down on the ground like that. And then that that becomes your stairs okay very solid very sturdy very dependable stairs you got to grab handle too when you're going in and out so if, if you're it gets cold and it's slippery please please remember to use the grab handle because these stairs get very 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 slippery if the, if the water is frozen on them okay so from here we're gonna go inside Cecil So this here is where everything comes together in the trailer for you, Cecil. This here's your awning. 
So it says in and says out. So when you want the awning in or out, you're gonna push and hold. And then you can see that your awning is coming out now. Okay. And then you just keep going until A, it stops, or B, till how far, you know, how much you want it out. If you only want it that much out, then you just stop. Now when you want it in, you just reverse the switch, push and hold in, and then your awning just starts to come in. And it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's a lot easier than doing it the old school way. That works with both of them. This here. Whoops, sorry. Sorry. This here, Cecil, it says slide out right here. So this is one, one button to put one of these slides out. There's going to be two. So this one here is your other slide out button. So again, when you want them out, you're going to push and hold. And then you can see your slide out is starting to come out now. And then you're going to push and hold. Just keep your hand, just keep your finger on out. And just push and hold. And make sure there's no obstructions on the outside of the coach on both sides for when you bring out the slide so it doesn't run into anything. And then that's... And then once you hear that noise, Cecil, that's a built-in clutch in the motor so you don't extend the slide out and you're going to hear the same noise when you come in. That's a built-in clutch so it, it'll stop you from bringing your slide in or out too much, okay? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to hit the other slide out room. Same thing, you're going to push and hold. This, that slide's going to come out as well. Again, make sure you go around the coach, Cecil, and just make sure that there's no obstructions on, the, on either side of the slides when you decide to push them out. Because there is enough power in these motors, if you don't catch it, it will wreck something, and if you don't catch it in time, then you're looking at a big bill, mm -hmm. okay? So this is what it looks like when it's all opened up for you, okay? And then this here, this is going to be your panel. So this is basically what you're going to use. So this is your water pump switch. You're only going to use the water pump switch when you are not hooked up to city water. When you don't have your water hose hooked up to, to the end of the trailer. This is only when you want to pump the water out of your fresh water tank to all the faucets inside the, inside the unit. This here's your water heater. So basically this is gonna be your hot water tank. So all you gotta do Cecil when you want hot water is you walk over here and you turn it on like that and you walk away. And then within probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes, you're gonna have hot water, okay? This is gonna be your light switches for all your lights over here. So this one here is going to be probably lights for your awning. Mm -hmm. This one here is going to be lights for outside. outside and then these ones here all these other lights here are going to be um right oh, right here. Here. there we go mm -hmm. there's all your light switches there see so sorry for the sorry for the mix-up um Oh, the, this here, heat, sorry. That's for your heated tanks. Yeah, this is for your heated tank, Cecil. So when it gets cold up where you are, and it does, you're going to come over here and turn this switch on. And then that's going to keep your tanks heated and keep everything from freezing inside your tank. Stop that. There we go. Okay, Cecil, this is going to be your fridge, okay? So this here is how you're going to turn the fridge on. You see where it says on and off. You're going to push and then you can see the two lights come on now. So this here it's in the auto mode. So what that means is basically what you're doing is you're telling the fridge, hey, I turned you on, but I want you to do the thinking for yourself. So in the auto mode, what's going to happen, it's going to check for electricity first. If it doesn't find electricity, it's automatically going to jump over to propane. So make sure, a if you're not hooked up to electricity, make sure your propane tanks are turned on. 
and then your fridge is gonna run off of the propane side. When you first turn it on, it's gonna take about four hours to get down to temperature. So like I said, if you, if you turn it on right away and it doesn't get cold, don't panic. It takes about four hours to get down, right down cold to the temperature. Now this is what your fridge looks like inside, okay? Now this is your freezer. So like I said, there's not a whole lot of room in here, but it's enough to get you by. These shelves are interchangeable, so you can adjust them to whatever height you need. This one here can go up here as well. And then this one here just stays in there. So you can, you know, put stuff on the top, stuff on the bottom and stuff like that. Okay. This over here is going to be your stove top. So what you want to do is you want to take this, you want to fold it one, fold it two. And then when you want to light this, you're going to see, see where it says off. What you're going to do, Cecil, is you see that little flame right here? You're going to take this flame and line it up with this white arrow. And then you're going to take this and you're going to turn it towards the fridge. And then you see that little, that little sparker there? Right there. When the propane is on, that's going to light up your burner. Okay? And then you can, you can start these all at once. Or you can start them one at a time. And then when you're done, all you do is, all you do is shut it off shut it off shut it off that kills the propane that kills the flame that kills everything to the stove top okay this here this button here is to put your accent lighting on your dials so you can see once you push that button the accent lighting comes on and makes it makes it look nice and pretty for you okay when you're done before you put the glass down make sure this is cooled off enough then you put the glass one and then two and then you can see it's 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 a pressure fit so you got to push it down and the reason why they put that like that is so when you're towing it down the road it doesn't bounce around on you okay now the oven you're gonna be a little a little different with this one so basically what you do this is your oven switch here so it's going to be the same as this, but instead of lighting this, this is going to light this down here. So basically what you're going to do, you see how this is spring loaded? You're going to line up the two, the flame and the arrow, just like you did these ones. You're going to push and hold like that. And then you're going to come over here and you're going to turn this like that. And then that's going to light your oven. Mm -hmm. And then once you see a little blue pilot light underneath here, you might have to light it a couple times, Cecil. But you're going to, once you see a little, way in the back, you're going to see a little, little blue flame. Once you see the blue flame, you're going to let this out. And then you're going to turn it to temperature. And it's going to light this aluminum rod down here. And then in turn, it's going to shoot the flames out. And that's what's going to heat up your oven. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, they're about 10 degrees to the bad. So if you want 350, put it at about 360. 250, 260. So... Or if you want, you can get a little temperature gauge in there that will give you an adequate temperature, okay? And then when you're done, you shut it off. That shuts the pilot light off. That shuts the propane off. That shuts everything off in the oven. So each time you want to light this oven, Cecil, you got to get in there and you got to and you gotta light it manually, okay? This here is going to be for your fan. As you can, you can hear it, this will be for your light. So it's not much of a light, but it's better than a kick in the pants. This switch over here is a, is a two-way switch. So one way lets you use your fireplace down here. And then the other way, when you put it down, lets you use your microwave. So you, these are on the same circuit, so you can't use them at the same time. So like I said, if, if, if you want to use your microwave, you got to push the switch down. And if you want to use your, your fireplace, you got to come over here and switch it up like that. And then that'll switch the power back and forth between the two. Okay. So now we'll go to the microwave. Standard standard household microwave see so when you want to use it all you do it is just push one minute start Stop Hold on. We got to set the clock here first. Cecil. hold on 
Let's go. We'll put it on one o'clock. Whoops. There we go. There you go. One minute. So okay. you can see it turns on, and then you know whatever you want to cook in there. It, just a just a standard household microwave. So, and then when you're done, you can just you can clear it. You can hit reset. That resets it. There's your clock there. Tells you that it's one o'clock. So now, if you want it to go from your microwave to your to your fireplace, you're gonna take this switch and you're gonna click it up. Mm -hmm. Now that arms your fireplace down here. And then these are your keys here. So this will be your power. You'll have a controller. Yeah, so that'll turn it on. This here is a timer. So you can go 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, three hours, four, five, six, all the way up to, I believe it's five hours on this one. Yeah, so you can time it for five hours. You can let it run for five hours and then it'll shut off by itself. This over here is the flame button. So basically all that does Cecil is just changes the color of the rocks down at the bottom there. So you can have red rocks, yellow rocks, blue rocks, and then back to red and then yellow and so on and so on. This here is gonna be your, your, your temperature gauge. So that H stands for high. And then L stands for low. So you can have it on a low temperature or you can have it on a high temperature okay and then a lot of people like i said you got to be hooked up to a 30 amp service to use this feature okay because it takes a lot of power so if you just hooked up to a standard uh regular uh power cord this and your microwave will not work okay so when you're done with everything cecil all you got to do is just push the power right here and then you can put it to sleep and then Go to the microwave or whatever you want to do okay this here is going to be your sound bar there okay. are remote controls yes there are remote controls for everything here cecil so this will be your sound bar so all you do is just push the power button and as you can see it says welcome turns it on this is bluetooth so if you have your your fancy iphones or samsung phones or any kind of device that has Bluetooth, you can sync the, your, your device to this and then listen to your, your own music over the, over the speakers. There's your, your zones here. So zone one is usually the speakers inside the trailer. Zone two is usually the speakers outside the trailer. So you can have both zones on like it is now, zone one and two, or you can have just zone one on if you want. Or if you want, you can have just zone two on if you want. And then this here is a USB in. So, or So if you got like music or movies on a USB stick, you can stick them in here. And then the, the music will play. And then this is an HDMI in. So if you have like a, a, a DVD player or a laptop or something that has music or movies on it, you can hook it up to here. And then you can listen to the music or you can watch your your uh your your computer over your your screen and then this here's the mode button so basically that takes you through everything the auxiliary in the tv the dvd the bluetooth you whatever you want to use you got to push this mode button to to whatever you want to use it for this over here is an old school auxiliary in for older devices that are not bluetooth capable like older iPods and stuff like that. Um, get a double-headed headphone jack. Put one into your one into your device and one into here. And basically, with that, you're only going to get the sound. You're not going to get the picture with that as well. Okay. And then this is your cable over here, Cecil. So when and when and if you ever decide to get a TV, you're going to run a cable cord from here into your TV and in, into that little thing on your TV as well. And then that is hooked up to that cable outside that I showed you already. So once you hook up to the cable outside, hook this up to the TV and then whatever channels you get outside will show up on, will show up on your TV, okay? This is a pouch with all your documentation in it. So um, there's a bunch of manuals in here. There's, you know, lots of reading material. So like I said, if, if there's a manual in here on everything, so if you want to 
learn more about something or a device or the stove or the fridge or microwave or whatever, Motion. the manual is going to be in here. Find it, read it, and it's going to give you more information. Okay? If not, just keep it in the bathroom and use it for when you got to go to the <laughs> washroom. Okay? All right. Um, that's your antenna over there, Cecil. So that is um, for the old school TV. Um, they're way more miss nowadays than they are hit. So don't get frustrated if, if you try to run your TV through your antenna and you don't get any channels. That is quite normal. So they're about 80 to 90 percent to the bad. This here is going to be your smoke detector. So we have installed brand new batteries in there for you. You, you're probably good to go for about a year. So again, the usual thing is whenever you do your time change, I know that's coming to an end as well. But whenever we still do it, just pay attention to the battery, take it out, put a new one in, and keep going. US, USB inputs right here. So basically those are charging points. So if you have your devices, your phones, your tablets, your you know, whatever you want, you guys can sit here. And if it's USB old school, ports. you can plug it in there. If it's new school, you can plug it in there. And either way, both both will charge your devices. Okay. Your lights, you know, there's the switch for your lights here. So with these lights, you're going to have to come, come to the lights and turn them on and off for whatever light you need and, and for how long. This over here is going to be your couch Cecil, so it turns into a bed as well, so these cushions come off. And then basically all you got to do is just lift it up and pull it out. So just grab it underneath here, lift up, pull out, folds into a bed. So if you ever have company or family over, you can throw them on the couch. And then when you're done, all you do is just grab it like this, grab it from the back, pull and push at the same time, goes back into place. And then you can put your armrest back in there like that. Okay. Got your seats here. They're they're basically just regular regular lounging seats. Um, with these ones here, you have to pull them away from the wall, and then they push back on. Yes, them. yes, exactly what Elma said. You just pull them away from the wall, and then you sit in there, and then you just push back, and then that will lift up the foot, and then the back will go back as well. So you can find your comfortable comfortable position that you want. Okay. Sink over here, again, very self-explanatory with that. Um, you got your hot and cold, these come off like this. Sink one side, and then you got the big sink on the other side here. So and this, this sink drains into its own tank, and the shower and the sink in the bathroom drain into its own tank as well. So that's how you get the that's how you get the two gray tanks in. And Cecil, before we go further, this is Alma, by the way. Um, I have your uh, insurance papers here, and in here is your coupon for your free camping if you choose to use it, okay? So anyway, that's all going to be in the trailer when, um, when Colin drops it off for you. And then last but not least, Cecil is down over here. This is a propane sniffer and a carbon monoxide sniffer. This guy right here. This guy is wired into the unit. There is no way you can shut him off. The only way to shut him off is by taking the lead off your battery. So like I said, there, there's, there's two reasons why this is, three reasons why this is going to go off. One is because your battery gets below 10 volts. If your battery reaches below 10 volts, this is going to start chirping because he wants to get your attention to let you know that he doesn't have enough power to do his job. The second thing is, is why it's going to start beeping is if it picks up propane or if it picks up carbon monoxide, okay? And the third reason it's going to start going if it's just plain out gets old and gets faulty. If you know for sure that there's no propane or carbon monoxide in here, if, if you know for sure that your batteries are charged and this thing is still going off, chances are it's, it's time to replace it with another one. Other than that, it's just going to sit there and do its job, and he's just going to take a sniff of the air every, every probably every two minutes, he's going to sniff the air, 
If he doesn't find anything, he's just going to sit there like a, like a nice little boy and he's going to stay quiet for you. Okay? And over here, see... The oh, dinette, dinette mix into a bed as well. Yes. We just then, pull off those posts. Yep, you just lift the table, pull the posts, and then you lay the table right on here. Right in this, right in here. And then you take these two cushions, slide it together, take those two cushions, put them down, and that turns into a bed as well. So, like I said, man, you know, if you got anybody more than three feet tall, they're probably not going to want to, you know, they'll be okay sleeping there. But <laughs> anybody above that, you're going to put them on the couch. Mm -hmm. Okay. This over here is going to be your furnace, and this is going to be your air conditioner. So you can see it's in the sleep mode now. You're going to turn it. You can see it says off. You're going to push it again. Comes into auto mode, which basically you're turning the, the fan into auto mode. And the fan is going to come on at random times for random lengths of times. Mm -hmm. If you want your furnace or your push this, oops, not that one. Push this mode, push the mode button again. And then you can see it says cool. That's going to be the air conditioner part, okay? So like I said, the, the lower you keep the temperature, the longer the air conditioner is going to run. On a day when it's about 32, 33 degrees, if it ever gets that hot up there, this air conditioner will, if you have it set at 13 degrees, this air conditioner will run all day long and it will not shut off because it's trying to get the temperature, temperature trying control. to get your trailer temperature down, but because it's so hot outside, it's a never ending battle with those two, okay? Next, if you push the mode button again, that's gonna take you to your furnace, and then that's whatever, what, what, whatever you set your furnace at, whether it's 30, 28, 27, 25, Whatever you set it at, it's just like a household furnace. It's just going to cycle on and off, on and off until you tell it different. Okay? But this is what I'm saying when, when you use your, your, your tanks. you got to be really careful using your furnace because you only have 20, you only have 20 pound tanks on here. So, you know, like I said, it's, it's, you might get a couple days out of them. You might get a week out of them. What a lot of people will do is if they're plugged into shore power, they'll grab a, like a little heater and plug it in somewhere or a couple heaters. That way you don't have to use all your propane trying to heat this unit. Okay. And then last but not least, when you want to shut the whole system down, when you're leaving, you're going to town or going somewhere, all you do is wake it up. The light's going to come on and you're going to push mode again. And then you see the little off in the bottom right hand corner that shuts the whole system down so when you come home you can push mode and walk yourself through whatever you want to do with it whether it's in the summertime or the winter time whether you want heat or you want cold air you just set it to whatever temperature you want and it'll just cycle on and off on and off and until you tell it different okay most important room of the house cecil going to be the, the bathroom that's going to be your shower over here very standard issue hot and cold so whatever you do just give it a few minutes because your hot water tank is 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 in the front of the trailer it's going to take a few minutes for the hot water to get up here so just turn the hot water on let it run for a few minutes the hot water it's going to be cold and then it, the hot water is going to come and then you can adjust your cold water to whatever temperature you want okay now this here, when you want to have a shower, you grab this here, and it just clicks in like that. So now, when you want to get out from the inside, there's the, one of these is on the inside as well. You got to pull it towards you, and then let it go, let it go back. So what you got to do is push it this way, and then let it go back. Because a lot of people, they just, they just try pulling it this way. And it won't it doesn't come it doesn't come undone on the inside you got to pull it back and then slide it this way okay here's your toilet here so basically when you're done your business there's gonna be a foot pedal right over here right on this side right where my foot is here so what you're gonna do is when you're done going to the washroom you're gonna stand up and you're gonna stand on this foot pedal 
and then once you stand on the foot pedal there's going to be water coming out of here both sides and it's going to rinse everything down into the into the number number two tank so like i said just get in the habit of putting water in the tank the more water you put in there the more everything's going to be sucked out when you pull that pull your your dump valve to get everything out water is your best friend when it comes to your black tank and stay away from the really 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 thick toilet paper because the enzymes that you put in here cannot break that toilet paper down and if it can't break it down it's going to get stuck on your sensors and you're going to have false readings on your tank when you hit your monitor panel to see how full your tanks are mm -hmm. so stay away from the really really thick toilet paper okay I know it's not going to be as comfortable as using a household toilet, but that's the downside of using a washroom in the RVs. You got to use thinner toilet paper. Mm -hmm. This over here is a GFI plug. This plug here is hooked up to the plugs outside. So if you blow the plug outside, you come in here and hit reset, and then that'll reset all the plugs. Okay. And then this is very standard issue here. You got your hot and your cold. and over here you got you know whatever you whatever you guys want to or whatever you want to throw in there mm -hmm. very very standard issue okay and then last but not least Cecil is going to be your your bedroom here so again very oops not a whole lot of you know thing to explain here you got a couple USB outlets over there as well for your devices and your phone and your tablets and you got a light right here and you got a light over there so at night time if you want to do some reading or something you got storage underneath the bed so so like i said if, if you need to store anything under here and your storage also underneath the bed goes into your storage outside so you can access it from here or you can access it from outside as well and that's the eq hitch and that's the eq cards. hitch for you so you're gonna have to get that set up um tomorrow we'll set it up to your friend's truck but just because it's set up to his truck that doesn't mean it's going to work on your truck if you guys have two totally different heights of trucks then somewhere along the line see so you're going to get in, you're going to have to get that readjusted somewhere okay and then right up here is going to be where your cable hookup is for the tv so if you do decide to put a tv in here you can you can mount the the, the 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 TV anywhere. It's all full of plywood back here, so you can put the mount. Some mounts are offset. Some are in the center. So whatever works for you. Don't use really long screws. Maybe maybe a three quarter inch screw. Even a half of inch screw is probably more than plenty enough to keep your TV in there. Okay. Lightweight. Because you don't want to screw it right through to your medicine cabinet. No heavy right. fifty five inch in there. Yeah, no 55 incher in there. So this here is just a wardrobe closet or a storage closet or whatever you want to put in there. There's multiple shelvings in there. So, you know, whatever you want to put in there, clothes, food, you know, whatever you, whatever you feel like throwing in there. And then right behind Elma here is going to be the I'm fire turn exit. Around. I'm new to this. So. <laughs> it's going to be the I'm fire trying. exit. So basically what you're going to do with that Cecil, if you do need to use it, is you're going to grab the handle, you're going to pull up, you're going to pull towards you, and you're going to pull the window open, and then you're going to grab the screen and pull it towards you, and then go out the window. Having said that, if you need to have some air in here and you want to just open the window, you're more than welcome just to open it like I just did, and just let it sit there and, and let, let it vent some air into your bedroom. And then closing it. Lift up, pull towards you, click it down in there like that, and then it just sits in there like that. That's your furnace intake? Yeah, that'll be your furnace intake. That's because your furnace is here, Cecil. It, it's going to be, it's gonna, there's going to be a little bit of noise if you're going to run that furnace at nighttime. So hopefully it's not too loud. If it is, then you might have to take that screen off and, and, you know, maybe see if you can stick some insulation in there. Again, I don't recommend you do that. But, like I said, I'm not going to lie to you. 
it's going to be noisy when that furnace is running. Cupboards, wardrobe, closet, very self-explanatory. And that window with works that. the same way. This window works the same way as well. So that's another fire exit window there. And then down over here, Cecil's going to be where all your fuses and breakers are. Okay. This half of it here is the 110 side. Big ticket items, air conditioner, microwave, fireplace, all on this side. This side's going to be the 12 volt side. Small ticket items, lights, water pump, stuff like that. It's your fuses, right? If you, there's 15 amp fuses in there. They're standard ATO fuses. If you blow a fuse, you pull it out, put a new one in, keep on going. Okay? This one here is just like at home. If you blow a fuse, you come over here, you reset it, and you keep on going. This is also in charge of keeping your battery charged too. There's a smart charger built into this. So it regulates your battery and monitors your battery if your battery is really down low it's going to pound the amps in there to, to, to get it back up really fast if your battery is full it's just going to send a trickle charge in there until un, until it's full and then once it's full like i said it's just going to keep sending a two or three amp charge to the battery and it's going to keep your battery full for you but like I said, in power outage situations, you really, 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 really got to pay attention <laughs> to your battery. Okay. And if you come over here, this is how you monitor your, your tanks and your battery. See where it says battery? Your battery's full. So when your battery starts depleting, these LED lights are going to start to disappear. Okay. This is your fresh water tank. You can see it's empty. This is your black tank. This is going to be strictly your toilet tank. You can see it's empty. So as you start putting your business in there, these LEDs are going to start to start to climb to let you know how full they are. This is your gray one tank. Usually gray one is going to be the bathroom. Usually gray two is going to be your sink. Galley. Okay. This is a DSI fault light. So when and if you have your hot water tank running on propane and you run out of propane this DSI fault light is going to light up to let you know that you need to switch your tank over to propane if you want to keep running your your hot water tank on propane it, it's also there for um, it's only hooked up to the propane side it's not hooked up to the 110 side okay and at the end of the day, Cecil, that's it. That's that's pretty much the million dollar tour. If you were here, I would go into it a lot more in depth, but because you're not here, you just get the meat and potatoes version. Now, if, if you want to spend some time and if, if you got access to YouTube or to the internet, go on YouTube, Cecil, and type in Wildwood. And then right on the corner here, is going to be a model number like uh 317 or or um yeah, right down here so go on to google type in wildwood t27 reis and there's going to be numerous videos on youtube that are doing the same thing that i'm doing they're going to go into a lot more depth because they have a lot more time but because I'm on a time schedule here today. And it's my phone and I saw it. That's right. And it's Elmo's phone and her hands are freezing. <laughs> okay. So congratulations on your new trailer. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have fun. And again, if you have any problems lighting something or you just want to know something, you can always give us a call, Cecil. And chances are, if I'm not available, there's numerous people around here that can walk you through over the phone. Okay. So again, I thank you for your for your for your purchase and I hope you enjoy it and